Hi, this is Chips from Single Track Magazine, and I am here today with Chris Troyer from Fox, and we're going to talk about Fox Live Valve. Um, well, in which case we should talk about what, what is it and, and why is it? Well, um, briefly, what is it? Um, it, it's, it is an intelligent suspension system, I would call it, in, in short terms. Okay. And um, what does it do? Why, why do we need it in our lives? Why is a longer story. Okay. Um, why was already, I would say, the mindset was invent, invented in 2004 when we brought out the first Terralogic fork. Terralogic was a technology <coughs> that um, was helping a rider to get faster basically by opening and closing the damping with um, a technology that is based in the damping cartridge. It was basically functioning like a light switch. Either way, oil would flow or would not. So it would, the fork would be stiff or would be open. Um, the first idea was um, great for its time, but as I said, it's a light switch. So and it, it could was tell between the rider hitting a bump and the rider just bouncing up. Exactly. Down. Yeah. Okay. So it was a, a special cartridge, a special damping technology, basically. This also went into a second revision where um, it was way better than the first one, but then electronics in general hit the market or were um, accepted, I would say, in cross-country racing. Um, Shimano did play a major role in there and we basically used the E-tube system in a cooperation with Shimano to have um, electronically activated um, a fork and a shock. It was called ICD or ICTD and the program um, this whole um, products were running under was called IRD. So intelligent ride dynamics, basically. And that, and that was a manual system where you, the rider chose exactly whether the fork was locked out or the shock was locked out by flipping a switch. Exactly. And the switch, the motors, cables, everything, battery, as an example, um, came from Shimano. And under the same umbrella, IRD, we are now presenting live wealth with the same mindset as before, but without any need from the rider to interact the old time the whole time with the suspension. So it's way faster than any human being would ever be in turning a switch or reacting or whatever. Okay. And why would, why would I need a bike that is locked out most of the time? And either way, I have to target to be faster or ride longer. So um, I can ride faster because it's the, the most efficient way I'm going up the hill basically, like we see in cross country racing, all these guys and of course the females as well use remote lockouts. So um, there's this racing mindset. The second mindset is of course, um, I can ride longer with the same energy that I need to put into the bike basically because this few percent that would end up in the suspension, bobbing and stuff like this, they um, are not wasted there basically. Okay, um, all sounds very clever. So, so the bike knows whether it's hitting bumps or not um, and, and adjusts the suspension. How does it do that? Um, we got three sensors in essence on the bike. We got on the fork brace one, we got near the rear wheel one and we have one here underneath the battery. Um, underneath the battery is also the controller. So I would call it the brain of the system basically. The front and the back sensors detect up and down movement only and in the controller it's a 3D axis accelerometer. That means um, it can um, see if the bike is pointing downwards, upwards, is riding on flat terrain and stuff like this. Or in the air. Or in the air. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we've got lots of, lots of wires going to the fork from the sensor to here back to the fork there's a wire to the um, shock and there's one from the from the rear sensor so uh, lots of wires mm -hmm. why wires why did lots you of it? wires means four okay <laughs> so we have two sensors from front and the back and we have one sensor for the fork uh, one cable for the fork and one cable for the shock why we need 
to stick with cables is we tried it with Bluetooth, but Bluetooth is just not fast enough. We're measuring um, here with 1000 Hertz. That means 1000 times per second. And that's with Bluetooth, this data rate is simply not possible. So it's looking for bumps a thousand times a second. Yes, very um, often. Okay, <laughs> yes, um, very quickly. And uh, it then communicates to the brain and says, right, bump ahead. Mm -hmm. um, what then happens? The brain decides Okay, yes. The, the um, fork and the shock should open up. Then it tells fork and the shock in about three to five milliseconds. That means that it's faster than a human being can react to a bump. Okay. So, so when a bump hits the front fork, the fork is already open before you even recognize it on the handlebar. Okay. And it will also open the, the rear shock? As well, yes. Okay. Um, right, pretty clever. Um, and then uh, does it stay open for, forever or what? It depends on what mode we're in. Okay. We're talking about um, three dimensions of the uh, accelerometer. Okay. That means the bike knows if it's going uphill, then the timer is different. It's quite shorter compared to the downhills basically. So um, the, the, the tilt of the bike is defining how long this, this timer will open up the, the suspension front and the back. And um, it could be that you're know, riding in the Alps on a single trail downhill, it could be that your suspension is always open. If you're riding uphill in, on a fire road in the Alps, it would be always closed. And the thing is really, is, is what's interesting is we're talking about 16 hours, the battery will last under the worst condition, or I mean the, the, the highest demand of energy. Okay. The highest demand of energy is only existing when um, the valves constantly are closing and opening. opening. So the power consumption as such um, is only there when the system is changing modes. When it's open or closed, there's no power consumption from the battery at all. So the, the system <clears throat> has two states, so it's got closed and open, is that the right terminology? Yes. And uh, so it makes this change between the two. That's the only thing, the only effect it has on the suspension. So it doesn't govern the, the compression or it doesn't do anything um, terrain specific it just goes it switches from one state to the other so exactly it's as if you've, you've yeah. turned a switch um, and that the open position is tuned by by you and the manufacturer mainly by the manufacturer okay so every every um, bicycle manufacturer has a certain character of a bike in mind how they want to have it and we work together with them to make this picture as as clear as possible with hydraulics. We're working with hydraulics, but we're also working with electronics. And these both logics combined basically then end up in a character that fits the bike the best, I would say. Okay. Yeah. We should probably mention we've got a, a Scott Spark RC here, which is a very fine bike, but it's not um, uh, not really the, the initial target of, of Fox for its live valve. Uh, this was just the only bike that um, we could get hold of to with the fit, system fitted, but Scott's looking to have it fitted initially to the Genius. That's the first um, bike in the range they're going to fit out with the live valve, yes. So, so you know, people may think, okay, this is great for cross-country races, but as a trail rider, I don't need it because, you know, I don't really, don't really go from from you know doing big climbs to mm. dropping in I'm just kind of riding around. Right? I think even trail riders benefit more from the system because the longer the travel um, the longer travel you have the more it needs this help basically that's one part of the story and I think the other part is also when you you know we we are from the industry and we both have multiple bikes mm -hmm. and we got we got lucky yes. because we have yeah. these chances and I think as a, as a normal consumer that is just an enthusiast and wants to ride the bike at his home soil in the Alps, in Porte du Soleil, and then in the trail center in Wales, whatever, then um, you just have one bike. And I think with Live Wealth, actually, you can have a bike that 
does it all. Everybody is claiming the same thing right now, mm -hmm. that one bike is there basically for all the different things we do on a mountain bike. Um, there, are, there are great bikes out there that combine a lot of things and that make it better and better and better. But I think this would be the last step if we're talking about geometry, everything else. I think electronics in the whole picture can add really um, a big benefit to have a bike that really does it all, finally. Okay, so the scenario you might be riding down a trail in Wales or whatever, and you get to the fire road and you're you know, racing your pals, then you're on, on the fire road and you can sprint up the fire road and the bike's not moving around and then you can drop in on the next trail and, and the, the fork's working. You haven't had to reach down and lock out the, the suspension. It just exactly. does it for you. So. Yeah. I mean, from, from my perspective, feeling-wise, this bike is feeling on the uphills like my cyclocross bike. It really has for me the same feelings. I can go full throttle on the pedals. I can stand up out of the saddle and there's, there's no energy wasted at all. And when I go on the downhills, it's a fantastic bike in descending. That's thanks to Scott, mm -hmm. but still um, it has two completely different ch characters. It's like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde a little bit. And it's really immediate in the, the, diff the switching between the two modes. So you can be on the gas, um, on a smooth bit of trail and the system's locked out or firm uh, and then the second or the millisecond you hit the bumps you're on a suspension bike but then once they stop you're immediately back on on your exactly. firm bike yeah. and okay. really important it also knows when you're flying so when you're hitting a lip you're in the air when you're basically zero g which is free fall yes then it will open up front and the back directly so you can go off a smooth smooth drop where, and the suspension be closed, I guess, and then it knows that you're about to land. Exactly. And opens everything up. And that's so. a sensation at the very first time. So first time you ride it, it's like, ooh, that's oh. really quite interesting. It knows. <laughs> um, okay, so there's, uh, obviously, there's this chunk is the, is the, the main addition. This attaches to a, the bottle boss that is here. Um, how much extra weight does it add? Um, compared, well, there are not too many bikes out there we, we can compare from the function. So we decided to um, take the Scott Genius as an example, which has um, a lever actuated shock and fork, right. which is about the same yeah, thing that we're doing basically here. And it's plus 140 grams compared to that. Okay, so 140 grams for the, the extra system. Um, let me turn that off. So this this is the battery. Yes. Um, and it should last, as you said, 16 hours? Minimum. 16 hours minimum yep. of riding time. Yeah, 16 to 20 hours. Okay, and it turns off when you're not using it? Um, it turns off after one and a half hours of being not activated okay. automatically, or you just hit the power just switch on. or power okay. button and then it's off. Uh, and it will recharge overnight or? Um, I think it's four and a half to five hours to get it fully charged. Okay. But again, um, after 15 minutes, it's charged for at least a two hour ride. Okay. Depending on not your terrain again. And if you are out riding, the battery stops working, what happens? It goes in open mode and stays there. Okay, so it's just a regular charge. Exactly. Ride. Okay. Yeah. Um, fine. Uh, so obviously there's going to be uh, it, it's not free. Nope. Uh, the, what, uh, what will it probably add to the cost of, of a trail bike? Um, the first brands who are going to come out with the system are um, Scott, Pivot and Giant. And overall, um, it will be a price difference of roughly 1,800 euros on top of it. Okay. To, depending in America, I would say like $2,000 um, roughly. Uh, and or you could buy the the system if you wanted to fit it yourself. Yes, you can. Uh, what do you get for that? You get you get um, the fork and the shock, the controller, all the cables you need, of course. So the the full um, system as such. There's no no single pr no no product available solo basically, mm -hmm. and it will be roughly for um, three thousand dollars. Okay, fine and. Finally, when's it all going to be coming out? Quite soon. 
Okay, so um, have a look on the Pivot website, Giant website, Scott website, ask your local dealers maybe. Um, they know for sure when the bike is going to hit the market. I would say definitely this year. Okay. Absolutely so sure on this definitely one. Definitely 2018. Great. Well, uh, we've had this bike for a week um, and you can read uh, our impressions on it and the story on the website. Um, thank you to Chris for uh, bringing along Fox by a live valve. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, all right. We'll, uh, we'll see, see this out on the trail.